So, we start out with SA, it goes to SB, SC, SD, SE, SF, SG, SH, J, L, and now it's M, and that's the most current one, SM. Now, there's probably been a lot of talk about, and some of the information is you guys have gotten about SM oil. Well, in about 2000, well actually it started in 2005 when the switch came over to be compliant to SM oil. There was a mandate where phosphorus levels in oil were too high. And they've been working on this for some time. Actually, they started in about 1996, 97, somewhere in there, to reduce phosphorus. And um, it was having an effect on the oxygen sensors at first. And then with the catalytic systems that they had and they were proposing to use, they knew that they were going to have to do something about phosphorus. Well, it all kind of came to a head in 2005, and they made a, an abrupt change to go ahead and do it. And they did it. Well... The, the thing that's interesting about that is all these categories that were always made before, it met the current category, but it always had reverse compatibility. It always met, it always met this, the subsequent category on down. So that if you had an oil that, what, let's say you had a car that was a, a, a year 2000 car, but you also had a, a 1982 or you maybe even have a 1977 car or something like that, that same oil could be used in that old car that was used in your new car. Well, that's not true anymore because of this particular situation that's occurred with the phosphorus reduction. Engines that require um, and, and, and where, the, where this whole elaborate thing uh, kind of comes to a head is... There's a particular ingredient that has to be in the motor oil that that is... One, remember when we were talking a little bit ago about the oil turning to smoke? Well, if, if that was all there was, we would wear our engines up. But there is an ingredient in the oil that is a reactor. It reacts to heat. It's heat sensitive. It's called zinc dialkyl diphosphate. Now that, we just call it ZDDP. Well, the phosphorus and the zinc are combined in equal amounts. So, if you have a thousand parts per million of zinc, you've also got a thousand parts per million of phosphorus. Well, the limit is 800 parts per million. That was the ceiling, all-time limit that they weren't going to have anything again anymore over that amount. This ingredient, the zinc, is a heat seeker, and when that oil, as demand is put on it, that speed, load, temperature situation occurs, it plates itself out instantaneously, leaches right out of the oil, is left over, and that's what the ring rides on, is this reaction layer. It, it separates the two metals, will not allow metal transfer, and will not allow um, gouging, burnishing, uh, any, any attachment of one surface to the other. That's the savior. Well, in older engines, engines like um, from the, even most of the engines today have Roller tappet cams, and they have overhead cams, and they um, are roller all the roller rockers, and, <coughs> and everything is pretty well taken care of. But there's a whole segment of engines that are early engines that are flat tappet type cam engines that will absolutely be um, they'll wear out uh, just using this kind of oil. But the hot rod industry is really having a fit with it. The kind of engines that you guys run probably are not going to see 
particularly a uh, like a higher degree of uh, uh, wear or or anything like that, unless you're really putting a lot of subjecting what like nitrous or turbocharging or thing, where you're really upping the demand on the oil, um, you probably won't see that much uh, in comparison to what the the older flat tap and hot rod type engines are. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Um, what I, I leave people with a lot of times on, uh, even, no matter what you drive, because like Rob said, a, a stock Honda Civic probably won't see that much, you know, wear in an SM oil, but um, what I can't get over is that with those changes, what they're doing is they're giving us all a product, a PISM product that has almost 40% less anti-wear agent in it, and we're all paying more for a quart of oil now, right? It has about 30 or about 40% less anti-wear. So my thoughts are, why would I want to use that in my mom's car, my car, or my hot rod, or whatever? It just doesn't make sense to me. So know what you're buying when you're out there, when you're picking stuff up. Read it, APISM. You know, whatever you're putting it in, make sure you have a supplement or something to bring it up, you know, to, to the correct level. Um, you know, we're all used to 1,000, 1,100, you know, 1,350 in, in some of our products. Um, and now we're looking at ceiling at 800. It's a, it's a real-world issue. We had a call a couple years ago from uh, Mercury Marine. You know, we build products for all, all kinds of companies. But um, they were having a problem with their uh, initial uh, camware in the first hour or two of runtime. They build about 42,000 four-stroke engines a year. Mercury does out of the Wisconsin plant. But anyway, uh, they were getting phone calls all from all over the country from their service center saying, hey, what's going on? We're flattening cams in, in a minute here. And so uh, we sent them over one of our products, our cam lube, which we call Assemble Lube HP, and they tested that and uh, put that on the cams and immediately got rid of that initial cam wear. And so it was interesting because usually it takes two years to get your stuff in production in a company like that. It took two weeks to get it written into the production plant. And they, they get barrels of it and put it on air. So every engine coming out of there has a dab of that on each cam coming out of it. But it just goes to show you how that can be a huge problem in some in some areas in some parts of the country where they're, where they're spitting out these numbers and, uh, and then it, it finally hits them, you know. So... You know, we're all individuals with one car. I mean, but still, the same thing can happen. So just be careful when you're picking up those APISM products. Um, you know, it's it's a real deal. No less than 600, no more than 800. To me, that sounds scary. I own a lot of machines and whatnot, and I wouldn't put it in any of them. You know. Yeah. Um, this cam is an example cam. It's not the exact cam, but this is a flat tappet lifter. And as you spin the cam. You can see that there's a, the idea is that it, there's just total load of scraping, a scraping load that, that takes place. And this is what happens with flat tappet type lifters on cams that don't have adequate protection properties in the oil, uh, like the new style oils that we have don't have the amount of, of the zinc, which is the uh, anti-wear additive, the extreme pressure additive. And so that's, what, when this happens, if you get into excessive camera, and it'll actually knock this, this load will actually come off during, in a, in a wear, big old groove, a very huge groove in the lifter, and it just totally wore out. The only thing you can do is replace them. Don't have a, an example of a roller lifter, but even though the roller lifter has less rotational friction in it and can move very easily, um, as the loads are increased through um, changing the cam, changing the spring, because you're, you're actually making a high performance engine out by changing these parts, the load then becomes so increased that it's very important to go ahead and use the proper lubricants, the proper assembly lubricant, and also the proper motor oil that has the protection properties in built into the oil.